Hello. Can you all hear us? There's a delay, so we'll find out shortly. But with that being said, let's get this party started. I'm just going to assume you guys can hear us. We're going to check in in just a moment. All right. <clears throat> Let me close certain things out so that way I have less things. Cool. Cool. Did you do the the screen share through Discord for me? Um, nay. Okay. <laughs> uh, the rationale is that uh, try to save bandwidth. I did it for when we had uh, our guest because that makes a lot of sense. That you know. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm just trying to save bandwidth. Unless there's something really important that I want you to watch me do as well, you know? I think it's just, it's all right, there's a delay. It's just like when we were heading, like, Adam. No, I, uh, I get it. I get it. It's fine. Just, I'm just saying, you're so offended. <laughs> <laughs> not I'm not wrong. I watch so, you paint all the time. You're too I'm offended, really bro. Anything. You're too offended, man. And so I just want to make sure you're less offended. Um. Late. Yeah, but uh, cool. I think it looks like, yeah, we everyone's able to hear us. A little banter. That's good. All right, cool. So we're going to do a short night stream. Just kind of a hangout. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I get it in. I missed the last one, but it kind of made sense. There was stuff happening. So I, I don't think that it was too big of a deal. Um, it was like the week of uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Plus, I had some uh, job opportunities that I was trying to prep for. Just all sorts of stuff. So, now with that being said, I feel like it's time to get back into it. Um, also, I think I was just trying to do, I was starting uh, to finish my classes. And then I also was trying to make sure I had some things going, I think last week for the Patreon. Just a lot of stuff. Just been busy. But I think this week I'm I'm finally able to kind of get back to streaming. Uh, and with that being said, anyone here watched the Sonic movie? I know you watched it. What do you think yep. of it? Uh, I really liked it. Cool, dude. Yeah, I thought it was actually, I thought it was really good. Um, I think the only parts where I I didn't like were the ones that were clearly for kids, like the the Fortnite Lost Dance it was a little much, but like I, I mean, it's for it's a kids movie, so it's fair. <laughs> I'm sure plenty of kids are doing that, so they liked it. Yeah, my kids oh, watched yeah, it. I don't think they really cared. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, do um, your kids play Fortnite? Yeah, they do. I mean, but even if they didn't, like the floss dance is like a popular thing because yeah. of the game. You know, what I mean, it's like there's like a lot of popular stuff that has nothing to do with. Or like that yeah. like extends the games that they or media that they comes popular from, like uh like the renegade dance on TikTok, like renegade, people, renegade. yeah people just do it, and, and yeah. some of them may not even know where it comes from. It's kind of like the Macarena for me, like back in the day, like I never really knew, Boomer. yeah, I never really knew where Macarena came from. I still like to this day every time I see the music video, I'm like, oh yeah, that's like what it's from. I just remember the song. I just remember the dance. Uh, there was that other, yeah. like, daggering from. Uh, daggering. Yeah, Mr. Laser, I think, is, or Major Laser. It's like some sort of, like, kind of techno DJ in Africa. Yeah, you yeah, look I it up afterwards. It's it's real, real, uh, it's real vulgar, the, yeah. the dance. <laughs> it's super just over the top. It's hilarious. Pull up that uh, incognito tab. Yeah, but I didn't know that that's what it was from until my friend showed me. Like, I heard the oh, song yeah. many times, and I was like, oh, this is a pretty cool song. And then my friend's like, dude, that's from, like, Daggering, and that stuff's, like, super, <laughs> like, not safe for work. I was like, what? And I saw it, and I was like, oh, what? Oh. It's very, pretty hilarious. It's very violently vulgar. But anyway... Cool beans, y'all. So I think what we could do 
is talk about a couple stuff, take a few questions, and then call it a night, yeah? So the movie, uh, I worked on Sonic. I worked on the robots. That's right. Yeah. Uh, specifically, I helped work on the main drone, like the kind of ones that are flying around, like shooting stuff, you know? Uh, the things that made him give, give the nickname Eggman. Yeah. And then uh, I also designed the little baby one, um, like the baby oh, one. The scene that... where it keeps co- like it keeps no, uh, actually, the drone. No, I forget that there's the little, little, even littler one. The second okay. baby ones, the ones that go up into their attic and they're like scanning around. Oh, those. Yeah, yeah, I helped design those as well. Well, like the reality is, like I just designed a bunch, <laughs> and then they're like cool, and then now I never heard from them again. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I saw uh, the the designs I helped work on. I don't think they're exactly my design. I'm actually going to share because I did like what I did for that movie. I liked it a lot. Okay. Um, I'm eventually going to share on my, on my art station, but ultimately, um, it's like the 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 main, you know, what I mean, like the main design elements were were definitely inspired by whatever I gave to them. Uh, my buddy, he he went and saw the movie, and he was like, "I didn't see your credits." And I was like, yeah, you know, sometimes you don't get credits in movies when you're just like a contractor for a, another contracted company, <laughs> you know? Uh, in fact, uh, I think companies and studios are getting better about this. You know, this is why you see thousands and thousands of people at the end of that, at the end of these movies, you know? But ultimately, I only worked on maybe... Um, like I mean, it was major designs, so there's a good argument to be to be said. But they did change enough that I don't know. But ultimately, I worked on the project from like no more than like a week or like two weeks, maybe three weeks at the most, you know. And so, but even even that, like, um, sometimes I have gotten real good credits in movies. There's only uh, a couple movies that I I gotten credits for that I I can only remember one. And the one that I got credits for, for sure, I remember, was uh, Warcraft. Uh, and that one, I didn't even expect it. Uh, we were just hanging out. And then my buddy was like, hey, let's see if your name's in the credits. And I was like, uh, yeah, you know, maybe it would be. Because, you know, Blizzard's a little bit different. And I was in the studio when we were working on it, you know. So maybe there's a little bit more um, love and care when it comes to that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Blizzard totally credited me. It was great. But I, uh, I, I, I generally don't stress too much about it unless I know for a fact I worked on something for a long time. And I think that it's really important that I did get the credit, but that's never really happened. Um, you know, I worked on the Love, Death, and Robots. That's another one that I was trying to remember. Uh, that one I got credited. But it's kind of funny because, like, uh, as the the show is over, it's like skip credits, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's and like so, built in. Yeah, so you can't even like have an opportunity to see who may have worked on it. And I'm almost yeah, certain you go out of your way. To see yeah, credits. yeah, I'm almost certain people skipped it because I always skip credits <laughs> myself. Yeah. So why would I expect anyone else? I'm like in the industry, and I should care about my peers and what they're doing. But I'm obviously selfish and only care if I got credited. But uh, but I honest, honestly don't care uh, whether I do or not. I know that I worked on a project and I could share usually the work that I did on projects, you know? And um, that's good enough for me and as long as I keep getting jobs too, you know what I mean? But I'm starting to realize that there is some merit to starting to like create an IMDb, you know, uh, starting to update my LinkedIn, just kind of make my everything just a little bit more pro, you know what I mean? There is a value in doing so, but I just haven't gone around to doing doing it. What's the value? Just because like uh, hiring managers something. and stuff and recruiters are always looking at this place. It's just okay. like if my percentage of hiring was already at like 10%, like, or like, I'm sorry, it's probably higher now. Like, let's just give it a modest like 60 or 70% hiring rate. Like I have a high chance of getting sought out, right? It might increase it to sixty five percent, and that's that's worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, where I think if you're like starting out 
and you have like 5% hiring rate and then you do uh, accreditation whenever you get, it only increases by 1% because of the sheer number of work projects is probably much smaller. You know what I mean? Where in my case, I've worked on a lot of stuff, you know? And so now it's, it's actually in the benefit to even reach out to some of these people and say, Hey, do you mind recommending my page, you know, to increase my value? But I digress. You know, I think it's really it's really cool to like um, work on projects in general, and then just teach and help others kind of understand what they can do to get better and move towards that world of awesomeness. But did you go see Sonic yet? I did. My kids liked what it. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think it was good, man. I um. I, I think it might have been a great kids movie. Uh, but my kids, you know, they were they were totally like super tired when I took them. I took them late at night and they were just like, oh, man, I want to go to sleep. Mm. And so there's only one movie that I took them <clears throat> to that they were just, they could not stop watching. And this is all my kids. And this is Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse oh, wow. is is the movie where like it's just so entertaining just viscerally you know what i mean like it's just yeah. it's in it like it's just built into that movie that even like kids or know that they're watching something legendary <laughs> like just even if it's subconscious they're just like whoa this is this is like top notch i remember my uh, baby boy man like he what he would when it, it came out on netflix he would just sit and watch that movie till its end every time you know it was like a great babysitter <laughs> <laughs> like we we would literally just leave it on for you're talking about logan yeah logan and uh oh. and all of them man if if any of them caught wind of it they all just sit there and just watch even me oh, like yeah. i would sit down and start watching <laughs> and i'm like oh man this is so good it'll be um, nice uh, to get a sequel it is gonna get a sequel there's no doubt i said yeah i said it's gonna be nice when we get to uh, see the sequel Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. It's good, man. It's a good movie. Have you seen it yet? Yeah, I, I loved it. I think I saw uh, it even in theater. Oh, uh, that's right. Who didn't see you it? You know, I don't go to a lot of movies. But someone didn't see it within our group. And I was like, you really? got to see it. It's on Netflix. I mean, no excuse. I even finally saw Joker. I rented it. Uh, oh, cool. What did you think of it? Uh, really, really dark. It was uh, absolutely. It was, it was super really tragic. Dark. Yeah, it was like... Not only did he have his own mental health issues, and they he did such a good job of portraying that. Uh-huh. Um, so he's at fault in some of the uh, some of the tragedy. But every time, like he tried to like reach out to society, it kind of like kicked him in the nuts. Yeah, that's kind like, of the whole premise. Is, yeah, just the compiling of like you know the world treating you like trash, and then like you you yourself are going through a mental health issue. Um, and just no one's helping and it just, it escalates, uh, yeah, absolutely. N- alongside the pol- political side of it, uh, which was an interesting, uh, addition and it didn't feel like it was forced, but like it was natural to the story. Yeah. I think the DC movies, specifically the Batman series and some other ones, um, they really lend themselves to this darker tone, you yeah. know? And uh, I, I thought it was brilliant. I loved it. The Joker yeah. was super good. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think I think uh, what I really loved about it was very much what you just talked about. You know. Yeah. You know, whenever I have arguments with people about like pol- pol- uh, political stuff, like I always try to like. I think we talked about this before, actually, about how people um, will make the complaint of like. Uh, guns don't kill people people kill people for instance right that's a that's a yeah. fair argument but then when you try to say okay well then let's help the people right those same people will also just be like well we can't do that because <laughs> yeah. it's, it costs yeah. money everything costs money and it's like all right well then you're you're what i like to call a problem maker right you just like to see all the problems you're not solving problems it's easy to recognize what's wrong right it's not easy to solve what's wrong 
Well, not only that, but things can be multifaceted. So Absolutely. while you you might be you know wanting to in that in that scenario, you might be saying it's a mental health issue or whatever gun violence. Um, you, somebody else might also point out facts and statistics that back up. Well, the access to guns is also just an issue. Absolutely. So your you know people kill people argument isn't necessarily valid. Um, well, it's, uh, it's but both, they don't both things. Well, are no, true, sorry, not right valid isn't is a strong statement. But you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they could both be parts of the problem absolutely um I am, and then you're, i'm a big fan like, of nuance i'm not a big fan of absolutes right and, and you're saying like okay give let's say you uh go along with their thought or their talking point right and you're like uh-huh. okay well then how about we uh put more funding into mental health uh, issues or we cover it in in our uh medic we do something you know, like to medicare, cover it. Uh, medicare for all yeah, is yeah. one of those solutions exactly and then they're like, "Oh no, no way! I don't want government controlling my choice." Yeah. Like, okay, well, we, you said we got to help those guys, so what are we going to do? Absolutely. You know, I had a I had a conversation once too about um, like with somebody. They were saying, you know, the more cops, the less crime. And then uh, no way. I, and then I mentioned where I live. I live in uh, a city called Irvine, California. And in Irvine, we have very low crime rates and also very low cops. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was mentioning this to, to this person. I was like, so then in, by your logic, Irvine should be just full of cops, right? Because there's so little crime. It's like, you know, crime is usually inspired um, by poverty or desperate people doing desperate things. You know what I mean? If If I don't have to steal from you or kill somebody to you know, maintain my livelihood. I'm not going to do that. Nobody wants to hurt each other, right? They only do it because they have to, or they are in a circumstance just so much worse, you know? It's the same with like terrorism, right? It's not like uh, terrorists are just straight up coming out of nowhere. There's usually some sort of like multifaceted reason. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should be okay with criminals, and it doesn't mean that we should be okay with terrorism. It's just that, to say that somebody is inherently evil and bad and you need some sort of like like stick to beat them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when it's clear over just even just like looking at the world at a socioeconomic level that it's almost it's almost obvious that it's never um, some sort of like absolute thing. It's always some sort of social social or economic purpose like whether people are very very poor or very have very low uh standards comparatively to where they're living right and this is very important like compare like the context matters because there's like people who are like farmers for instance that live like out in the out in the wild whatever like that have no construct of like the marvel movies (laughs) you know and stuff like this so their livelihood is actually even though by the by you know western and modern terms uh, we would think that they're poor, right? But because of the, based off of their context, they're actually fine, you know? Uh, but anyway, but when you have that context where you your neighbor has a cell phone and you don't, um, and you have barely any access to some of the things that your neighbors do, and I mean neighbors in a more metaphorical sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's when you start to see these types of things more and more often, more and more frequently. And it's just like, it's not just an American thing, it's like all around the world. And so it's clear that if you want to solve these types of social issues, you have to do social things. You know, you got to do large scale social stuff. Now, is that easy? No, <laughs> not at all. But is that the solution? It's definitely closer to the solution because all, obviously the other way, like the the, the stick strategy, uh, usually causes a lot of more damage than people want. You know, and and it doesn't necessarily solve the problem. Uh, immediately you know what i mean because if you think about like the first world war we beat you know the germans the first time it wasn't like all right well we're good now and then everything was fine and fixed after the war like we won you know uh it got worse right which led to world war ii right and the rise of nazis so clearly even using a stick you know uh, i think the the only time where you really saw where i used a large stick and it kind of really reformed a country in a whole different light was uh, when we nuked Japan. Because now if you look at Japan and their culture, like they are 
deathly afraid of like conflict with that scale because of how much damage it did, you know? And that's even, it, dude. We yeah. gotta just nuke more territories. <laughs> yeah, Stuck. but hashtag nuke everybody. <laughs> but that, think about like how like how extreme you have to go for that kind of social change, you know? To yeah. instill yeah, yeah. like a fear in that whole nation for decades after, you know what I mean? That's that's kind of insane, you know? So clearly nobody wants totally. to do that. Um and I don't think even modern like, you know, war folks want to do something like this right well, i mean it's not like to do. yeah it's not like when the terrorist bombed 9-11 american was like dang good point y'all you guys are making <laughs> a good statement <laughs> you know no mm-hmm. like it it just escalates you know well like, it, nobody was american, like chill about that yeah americans are missing a lot of context a lot of time and it's hard to like look at your own country and it's and it's wrongdoings and like be honest with uh the downfall of your own government the fact that we are like occupying like 80 something countries um and we do drone strikes and we're murdering civilians like we're terrorists you know like yeah in the we, eyes we, of others yeah yeah like a lot of our officials um are war criminals uh and we just don't look at them that way because we're americans uh when you have like a better idea of global politics you realize like how terrible america has been to a lot of these countries and we help other countries too so it's not all bad nothing's black and white you know what i think it is like why it's so hard for us to to kind of accept this well first of all mm. it's hard for people just to accept you know in themselves that they made a mistake just the individual yeah right? let alone yes. a nation okay so um but you know what i think it is is like i think like whenever people get into the white house like they're showed basically this house of cards <laughs> you know and it's like look if we do this these very good things it might actually devastate the american economy you know because we might have a lot of infrastructure like that is hidden from us the public that relies on a lot of these conflicts and i think that there's, there's a lot of truth to this you know and, and anytime a politician or any kind of civil leader kind of questioned the stuff and actually inspired movement, you know, um, they seem to get shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. From Abraham live. Lincoln, right? Because he changed social norms and circumstances and people yeah. felt the need that he needed to die. <laughs> okay. And then uh, you take a look at yeah, Martin Luther King, right? Uh, Kennedy, you know? It's, it just seems like they're like, they might see all these stuff and they see all these, these bad stuff that's going on. They're like, we got to make some change, yo. And then someone's like, I'm going to change your face, you know? And it's just, it seems pretty scary to think that that's, there might be some truth to this, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to get into that. And with that being said, why don't we talk art? Why don't we get some art questions? Now that I've kind of got right. some time and ranted. Uh, so guys, go ahead and ask some questions right now. I only have, let's see, six. We have six questions. Yeah, well, that's okay. a lot because I talk. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Every question. Is... Not, they're not necessarily all about art. Uh, um, okay, sure. I don't read them before I, t- I grab them. I just see it's a question. Okay, so first question from Catalyst says, Okay, cool. Uh, was there ever any design you did for a client that when you saw the final product, you really didn't like how it turned out? No, not really. Okay. I mean, I guess you can count the Monster Truck franchise, or that franchise, the Monster Truck oh, film. Oh, those designs. Um, but I didn't design anything. Like, like I designed, or that made it in the film. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like the ultimate results, not because of the way that it was designed and the way that the designer before me or after me, I mean, designed it. I just felt like they just, the whole direction wasn't necessarily uh, there. And the results was something that I didn't feel like was any good uh, comparatively. But I, I don't know. Like there's nothing I can think of that I'm like, Oh man. Cause most of the time, uh, they make it and then they put it into the movie or the video game and it's either somewhat what I did, uh, but just a lot better because maybe went through a couple more re- revisions with some other artists. 
or they did exactly what I did. And uh, very rarely do I dislike what I draw. Um, and I don't mean that in an e egotistical way where I'm like, oh, I, don't, I draw the best stuff all the time. It's more like I just like what I draw. You know, I like drawing and I feel very confident with most of what I draw. This is why I have such a rapid fire posting you know, system where I can just post artwork because very rarely do I dislike what I've done. Now, this is an important distinction. It doesn't mean that it's good, right? Later on, I'll be able to objectively look at it and be like, you know, it could have been better, you know, or I could have done better art at the time. But I don't regret the artwork that I've done um, at any point because clearly it helps me get better. And some people like it as well, you know? And so it would be weird to just say, like, this is bad design and some people really love it, you know? Or... Uh, what are those people thinking if they like this? I don't have that kind of perspective. I like all that I draw, and I draw what I like. But like I said, the Monster Truck movie might be the only one that I can even that comes close. But it, it's not a good example because it's it's not even remotely what I designed. So, and I'm more disappointed uh -huh. of just like the overall direction. I think it could have been better. All right. Uh, hey guys in the, uh, that are watching in the chat, um, we just got a bunch of new questions and we might, we most likely won't be able to get through all of them. We can try so to. If we, okay, we just well, going I'm, just, I'm just letting them know if they don't have their question asked or answered, um, check back next stream. Uh, and sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so. And uh, to get on top of that, like if you're a person that feels like you have a lot of questions or you just want to keep on asking me stuff, uh, you can have a better chance if you go through my Patreon. I do workshops there and I answer pretty much every question uh, that's possible because right now I don't have too many people that attend these things. Uh, so this is how it is for now. But I do uh, like to spend a lot of time helping people on my Patreon. And if you really uh, have a question you wanna ask me and you don't wanna like, you know, throw money my way to join like a Patreon, uh, you can just ask me on Instagram I, I answer everything pretty much there. I It just takes me time. So you just got to wait. I might answer it in like a week or a month from now. But if you leave it there, I'll get to it eventually. It just might not be expedient. And some people who follow me on Instagram who's already asked, they could probably vouch for this. They're, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He does talk to peoples. Okay. Um, Henry Lynch asks, which project hey, in the up, last Henry? five years did you uh, have the most fun working on? That you can talk about the wait what the most fun i had in a project which i'll read it again which project in the last five years did you have the most fun working on oh last five years you can talk about um i guess love death and robots even though it was a short amount of okay. time best studio oh you know what no that's that's a lie because i just got off of um working with the the rag guys that was a lot of fun the music video, uh, Phoenix oh, music yeah. video, I art directed that. Uh, and that was so much fun. I actually did enjoy that very much. Yeah, I didn't, right. I didn't think about like, I'm thinking five years. Uh, but the best time that I think in general that I've ever had was working on the StarCraft cinematic. And I don't think that it was necessarily fun. It was more that like, I just learned so much. So it was like, it was probably fun by the measure of learning that was happening. Not so much like fun, like yeehaw, every day is so <laughs> tight. It was more like, uh, like that was definitely like the, the riot job. That was a lot of fun. That, that was really enjoyable. Even yeah, though like I you went like, uh, on location, didn't you? Yeah. that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And even just okay, like so working on a music video was just super cool. Just the whole thing was just a lot of fun. Um, okay. Uh, re, uh, I don't know how to say that. Ryuki, Renison, um, oh, says, you. "Do you normally have to wait a couple months before releasing certain NDA content?" Um, usually, but most artists and people just share as soon as the movie comes out. But it's oh, up to once it's like public. It yeah, sense. once it's once it's available. I know for for some projects, I don't share because I know it might spoil the movie a little bit right oh, like I see. seeing like yeah, the design the post on, yeah 
yeah, I've seen the design of something that might not be seen until you watch the actual film. So I usually oh, I wait like a there. yeah, I usually wait to like a month or two. Okay, yeah, but I I've heard this before that like some folks um, when the project gets released, uh, they'll just dump it and uh, ask, it's one of those like ask for forgiveness, not permission kind of things. Yeah, the Love, Death, and Robots is a great example because I asked and they're like, you can never share. And now that I know that I can never share. I don't know when I'll share, maybe like five or six years from now, but they didn't say they, never. They, they were just, oh, was just, they were just like, they were just like, no, nah, it seems like you can't, but they didn't say if I never could really, um, just not re <laughs> really soon. And then I go online and I see all of my friends share all the stuff <laughs> yeah, that they do yeah. and no one's getting in trouble. I even reached out. I was like, are you getting in trouble? For this? He's like, nah, dude, I don't give a fuck. And then uh, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> you know it's one of those like it'll, it's clear now like I'm doing it nefariously versus just like whoopsie I didn't know you know because you've talked about it publicly you know? yeah so I'm so. just like jeez but I will but eventually still do that like well they did it so. nah I don't like that philosophy <laughs> that's yeah, the what okay. about -ism. that's what you see in politics a lot man it's so annoying it's like, so and so did that too it's like bro it's a both crime. <laughs> then they both should go to jail. I don't care. You know, like you're not hurting my feelings when you say that this other person, politician, did something stupid. I'm like, yeah, cool. Like they should also like suffer the consequences. Anyway. All right. Uh next question um from Juan Carlos. Hey. Says I am 32 years old and I've drawn all my life and I'm finishing my illustration career. Am I too old to work in the video game industry as a character creature designer? No. Uh, and you just play that. I also love you, AJ. <laughs> Thanks, man. You should also play that scenario out in your head. Could you imagine you apply for a job, you know, and um, they get your resume, they get your portfolio, and they're like, this Juan Carlos, man, he's probably the greatest character designer I've ever seen. Oh my God, his work is so great. Oh, wait, wait, what's his birthday? What? He's 32? Oh, dude. No, nah, never mind. Pass. Hard pass. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's not a thing, you know? Like, if you just even think about it, right? It's more of your own insecurities, right, that are driving that question because you're afraid that you're old, you're an old dude doing old things no man nobody cares about your age it's bad business to have any kind of discrimination you know whether it's based off of genders sexuality uh, or age right like if you're a great artist and you provide the content that the studio needs uh there's a very high chance you'll get the, the job you know yeah it's it's not like sports it's not like being 32 and or let's say yeah, being great 50 point. And wanting to join like with the professional football league, like even if you're well built, that age might actually be a barrier. Or like um, esports, right? Sure, yeah. Um, and so it, it's just not one of those kind of industries. Like you're fine. It doesn't matter how old you get. Yeah, as long as your work's good and you, you yeah. love what you're doing. I mean, the late Sid Mead. You know, Rest if he didn't, you. yeah, if if he didn't, if it didn't pass, for instance, and he wanted to work. He could get a job, and he was very, very old. You know how how old was he when he passed? Like he was in his eighties. Yeah, I think he was eighty eight. Um, so let's say he was seventy, and he worked in the industry for eighteen I years. <laughs> like, you know, he he would have been fine. You know, the problem isn't his age; it's his price. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not that the people were like, "Oh man, he's too old to draw." No, man, he's he could he'll still draw badass stuff even at his old age. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so don't worry about it. Yeah, don't Dude, worry about it, buddy. That's the least of your worries. If your portfolio is garbage, that's more worrisome than if you're old dude or old lady. Yeah, and that's something that you can work on at any point. Yeah, so. work on your age. Just wait. <laughs> work on your age. <laughs> All right, Just wait till on. you're ripen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is from JVMVRVR. Cool. Um, whatever that means. Uh, they say two tips to improve my design. I want to be a character focused concept artist. Uh, only two tips. Um, you should learn 
graphic read and anatomy. There you go. Science field delivered. Yep. Okay. Yeah, your anatomy will help you not worry about drawing people. And then uh, graphic read will help you design things that look cool. But those, you asked for two tips. Those are the two tips. If you only had two. Um, I will say that, that there's more than two. <laughs> there's more than two things you should be focused on. But if you only had two, if I only had two, those would probably be the two. You know what? No, no, no. I take back one. Uh, graphic read, I take that one back. I'd say shapes. Shapes is pretty valuable. Okay. Uh, Denzel asks, hey, Anthony. What's up, Denzel? Drawing for two years, seriously, made huge improvements in such a short time, but I never this feel in right. control. It all feels like luck. Does feeling or being in control simply come from mild, come with mileage? Yeah, that's a very wise assessment of what's the reality. It's exactly right. Um, but if you want to kind of like help speed up that process, uh, a good piece of feedback would be to uh, essentially, uh, essentially just begin to time yourself and do the same thing, uh, but in a shorter amount of time, just get faster and faster. Uh, if you, let's say, are having a hard time drawing characters or you feel like you're not drawing them consistently, then you just got to draw more characters more consistently. Um, and then eventually, it's just like you suggested, with time and practice, you'll feel a lot more confident. Like you're seeing me paint this thing. It took me, a, what is, what are we at? 38 minutes so far, right? And most of you guys I know could probably barely draw something in double the time that I spent. And that's a mis misunderstanding of what it took me to do, like to get to this point. Like, it's not that it took me 38 minutes. It took me many years to be able to draw in 38 minutes. Um, that lack of control was very prominent uh, or very prominent. prominent. Yes, thank you. But very prominent, prominent <laughs> <laughs> it, when, I, uh, when I first started to. Uh, but uh, I didn't let that sense of feeling uh, guide me. I always say that my greatest, like, superpower, if I had one, my talent is that I don't care that I suck. You know, a lot of people, in fact, this is what I do a lot in my uh, mentorships and my Patreon. I just help people stop feeling bad about what they're doing, you know? And um, because that's ultimately what stops you. It's a really, it's a really powerful deterrent to feel crappy, you know? Uh, I mean, Mike has experienced this and I've helped him get past it. He doesn't think this way as much anymore. He's really good about knowing that it's more about lack of effort and time, right? Than it yeah, is yep. about anything else. Uh, it's just your brain's just trying to be, you know, good to you. It's trying to make you not feel bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's ultimately what's happening. It's really good at that. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, you should guide with this mentality of like, oh, you know, um, if you go to the gym and you lift like a hundred pounds, right. And you're like, Oh man, that was super hard. Uh, tomorrow you won't be able to lift 200 pounds. You know what I mean? Maybe you won't even be able to lift a hundred pounds again because you'd be so sore from the previous day. Right. And so, but if you do that for years, eventually you will lift 200 pounds. You know, you understand what I'm getting at, but in art, for whatever reason, people will study and practice like anatomy forms, whatever, like for like a whole day. And then the next day they try to do it and they're just like, ah, oh, nothing's sticking. And then they just kind of completely give up. But if you think about what I just, the example I gave with the going to the gym, right? It's, it's ludicrous to think that all of a sudden everything would make sense after just one day of asserting yourself, right? Just like it's absurd to think that one day of lifting 100 pounds, you then can lift 200 pounds the following day. It's a, it's a lack of patience that usually drives people in this direction, and it's wrong. That, that piece of advice your brain is telling you is objectively wrong. It doesn't know what it's talking about. It's very primitive, that part of our brain. It has really bad advice, so don't take it. You want to 
you want to swap out your intuition with a new series of intuitions. Okay. Um, so this <laughs> cool. is really cool. Mike Leon, uh, donate $20 through Whoa. super chat. Dang. Uh, and you sent the message. It says great work with, with Photoshop. Appreciate I have it. been able to stay out of the limelight, making a fantastic living with art. Just curious. Have you reached the blue, beautiful flat earth? <laughs> <laughs> have I reached the beautiful flat earth? I'm not sure what the context of this means. <laughs> I don't know either. But... Can you elaborate, please? <laughs> yeah, please. You can elaborate, elaborate. I'll read it out. Yeah. But, uh, um, thank you, Michael. What was the first part of his statement? I got blindsided by the flat earth. Uh, I have been able to stay out of the limelight making fantastic, making a fantastic living with art. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're getting at. Like, he's kind of been able to just not have to do all this mess. That other people may have to do that's cool yeah. man yeah i um yeah i'm a big fan of uh helping people make a living from art and so any any advice and insight i always can give to people i can give you know sometimes people are like you know i want to work for a studio i want to do this i want to do that they want to like have more fame or whatever youtube fames uh or some sort of artistic you know um renownedness but it's kind of okay to just be able to like not be in the limelight like he was just suggesting and just like working and making a living in fact uh i was just finishing my class and then uh a couple of uh, my students asked me some questions about artists in the industry and stuff like this and i mentioned how there's actually quite a few artists that nobody ever would know about you know because they don't share stuff online you know, ever. And, uh, and they're like, well, how do they make a living? And I said, well, they just have a reputation offline, you know, that's really, really large. Um, some artists, uh, have already escaped this again. Um, like artists like Craig Mullins is a good example of this, but he's a little more well known, even in the more new age of people that are trying to learn how to be a concept artist. But like Jamie Jones is one of those people that I think people might have forgotten about. Um, but he's one of those things too, where he's like, he's a rare horse that if he's a rare unicorn, or if he shares his work, everyone's like, what, who the hell is this? <laughs> you know, uh, Daniel Chavez is another one of these people. Wing Wei, another one of these people. And if you're asking yourself, like, I don't know any of these artists, that's my point. And they're all working professionals and it's cool. It's cool to be. And also look them up and yeah. get to know them. Yeah. I'm sure you'll like what you see. Um, okay. We'll get to the next one. Milbert is back. Says, uh, hey Anthony, I DM'd you on Instagram. I guess you don't have much time to reply to DMs. Didn't think of it. So, uh, thought that was a question. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> As a comment. But get back to Milbert. <laughs> yeah, man. I will. All right. I said uh, it takes time. You just yeah, gotta it be sounds, patient. It sounds like he knows that now. <laughs> okay, um, cool. All right, Diego says, uh, what do you think about photo bashing for concept art and illustration? It's fine, as long as you don't steal. And uh, and don't don't be mistaken, photo bashing can still be stealing like photographs. I usually suggest if you're gonna photo bash, you should, you should try to get your image to look so much different than the original photo that you got, you know? In fact, I think you shared one with like uh, Jonathan Ting. He did something on YouTube. Or you took like a like a thing uh, a very simple object and just using that one object made like a whole neck head that's the yeah, kind of stuff you should be doing that's really really powerful or if you're gonna use it uh, then make it photorealistic uh, to the point where people may not even know what photos you used at all at any point in that regard as well I guess the main theme is just to make it so nobody can recognize kind of the origin that's probably the best use of photo bashing, in my opinion. Yep. Okay. Um, Jan Tamba says, how would you recommend one start his concept art career when he, she has no work experience whatsoever? Yeah, so you just got to keep applying and going to events and putting your artwork out there as often as you can. Eventually, someone's going to bite. Eventually, you're going to get those opportunities. Uh, it just takes time, you know, but if you're sitting, you know, at home twiddling your thumbs and 
you're not applying, you're not going to uh, many events, then you're going to have a harder time. And you should go, man. You should definitely go. And it seems like, you know, to me, like people are like, well, you know, I don't can afford it or do this and that. But you just got to understand, I, I'm telling you, this is what you have to do to increase your chances. You know what I mean? And if that answer is not going to be helpful to you, then you need to uh, think about how you can make that an option, right? So it's like if I asked, if you asked me how to get better at drawing, and I'm like, you got to draw a lot, but you're like, I don't want to draw. <laughs> and then obviously it's going to be harder for you to get good at drawing then, isn't it? By just looking at images, maybe you can figure it out, right? And then when you finally put pen to paper, it just makes sense. But I mean, it just seems so unlikely. Why don't you just draw? Uh, with the events, like, okay, maybe you can't go to every single event, but you can, maybe you can go to one that's local to you. Uh, or maybe you can start to go to online events and maybe you can apply your work online or maybe you can just make really outstanding work in general and uh, push yourself in that way, you know? But ultimately, you just got to be good enough to even be able to uh, um, share your work online that will give you that kind of exposure. But generally speaking, most people don't share their work enough or go to enough events and make friends and talk to people. Okay. Uh, Don H says, will you open one-off portfolio reviews and feedback on your website or Patreon in the future? Yeah, eventually. That sounds like a great idea. All especially right. especially through the club and Patreon. That makes a lot of sense to me. I just need to structure it. Uh, the first thing that I'm doing is uh, trying a bunch of stuff out. And right now I'm trying to move towards something like a sessions situation where we do hangouts. And we do studies together. Um, I can see how there could be a, a system where we can do portfolio reviews. And maybe mm. I can try to find a way to like record it. And just kind of power through it. You know, and then even if it's just like a five minute portfolio review, that can still have a lot of value to somebody. Okay. Um, Jane Wan says, I am currently in college right now and wanting to get into the entertainment industry any tips um yeah build that portfolio <laughs> i mean i can't stress it enough you got to think of it like this guys um your portfolio has to be so good that as soon as you share your work and people see it they know that as soon as you walk through the door that you'll be able to work that should be the standard you should be reaching uh, don't expect you're going to learn how to do the work at the studio. They're actually expecting you already know how to do this. So if you like, for instance, you want to work for a company like Blizzard, then your work should look like you can already work there. If not, like people might already think you work there, you know? Uh, otherwise, you know, I don't really have any other advice. Um, there's a lot I can say. I just don't have the time to say it. Okay. But that's usually the, next... the best general advice I can give for that kind of question. The next question is from Clarence. Uh, Clarence Sky. And it says, can you do some lightings? Wait, can you do some lightings on your drawing? And this, this has some lighting on it. That might have been <laughs> it didn't or something. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, all right, let me get to the next one. Okay, uh, True uh, Trudel says, uh, "I go to you for reinforcement in my art routine. Awesome. Is there anywhere that you can that you go to continue your art routine?" No, no, that's not the question. I said it wrong. I'm like my brain's off. Okay, it says, "I go to you for reinforcing my art routine." Uh -huh. Is there anywhere that you go to continue the art routine motivation juice? Um, no, I just do it. I, um, I don't, and I, I, I think I just did a video about this. Like I don't rely on motivation or inspiration to, uh, guide me. I just do things. So for instance, uh, I started to work out more and eat less, you know, be better about health and fitness and nutrition. And uh, I've been losing weight and gaining muscle. 
and nice. yeah, and all I do is those things. It's it's more of me like saying, okay, I shouldn't drink that, or shouldn't eat this, or I shouldn't eat this much, or I shouldn't drink that much. I just do it, and uh, I know that this is hard for many other people. It was hard for me too, but since I got so good at art, following this kind of same strategy, but just for years, I just realized that's all you got to do for many things that you want to get good at. It's this kind of reassuring feeling that you know that it's it's a matter of time. Not a matter of like, like some sort of whim, right? If you're hoping to do something, um, or you're hoping for a result, you know, or you're hoping for a feeling, or you're waiting for something to happen, that's ultimately what gets you, right? If you kind of just do it, it tends to just work itself out eventually. Uh, not all things, but like for instance, health and fitness is one of those things that I think is obvious, right? For most of us, we can just do these things and it will get us better results, right? Um, because then, like, you know, I don't know all of the things that I need to do and eat, so I just research, right? I don't know the, the kind of workouts that could help me be even stronger, so I just research. And I think that in itself is just natural inspiration and motivation because, like I mentioned in the videos before, I use them as a tool, not as a requirement. Right. So when I watch somebody like lift a certain weight in a certain way, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to try it when I go to the gym and I try it and I will decipher whether it's something that I should keep doing or something that I have to do and I just need to get better at it. Right. So there's some exercises that I'll do that I'm like, ah, this is, this seems like it'll destroy my body <laughs> in time, like a power clean. Right. I don't know about that one. Right. So it's just, there's like a lot of like exerted energy, a lot of like movement and heavy weights that seems to me in time, it will just F you up. I'm not an Olympic athlete. What am I trying to do here? Another thing is like always maxing out, like doing a one rep max or two rep max. Again, I'm not a power lifter. I'm not aiming to try to prove to people that I'm super strong. I just want to be healthy, you know? So I don't do these things, even though some people will recommend it for their strength training regiments, what have you. I just ignore them because I don't think that's what I should be doing, right? Like but if muscles. yeah, but if someone says, okay, if you want to build quads, you got to do squats. Even though every time I do squats, I feel like I'm gonna vomit so hard because oh you're wor yeah, because you're working like over fifty muscles to do just one squat. You know what I mean? It's a really like. It's a really energy consuming workout out of all the workouts, right? But it's so good for you. And it doesn't feel like, you know, it is something that, like, even with a lighter weight, right? It's still, I still feel this way, you know what I mean? Versus you like do squats while holding a weight. Yeah. Like I have, like, a, I do bar uh, back squats. Oh, and okay. so I, I've done squats and I skateboarded for like 13 years and you squat on skateboard all the time every trick no nah, like body body weight squats don't mess me up i'm talking about like if you put like hundreds of pounds on your back and then you try yeah, to squat, yeah. that's way different yeah. it, like your nervous system like goes on like total like everything's like on fire <laughs> but it, i know i should be doing him so i do him you know what i mean because like it's one of those things that it's just like i know this is actually a good workout i'm not doing anything that is overtly dangerous as long as i have good form and i don't go too heavy right um, just like every other workout, you know what I mean? And so with painting and drawing, it's the same philosophy, right? Like uh, I might not like stylized character designs to draw whenever I draw them. Well, that's not true. I like them, but I don't like my favorite thing to draw is the stuff you see me draw right now, right? Like this kind of creature design, you know what I mean? Um, so I will, you know, or like, let me use a different like contemporary designs. Like I don't do them, right? I don't do many contemporary designs because I don't feel the need to, you know? That's kind of the same way I feel about power cleans, right? Um, it's not something that I don't I don't really care for. But should I learn like realistic anatomy? Yes. Do you see kind of the point I'm making here? It's about yeah, it's about that I need to learn it, even though I'm like, ah, you know, this is rough. You know what I mean? Um, especially like learning anatomy in terms of muscles and stuff like that. That was very challenging. Okay. Um, but once I learned it, it was super powerful. 
So yeah, I don't have a routine or I don't have anybody that just is in my corner that motivates me when I don't feel motivated. I just do it because it's a principle. Okay. Clarence says, oh, I reread that. We move on. Yeah, let's, uh, power, let's, uh, let's power through these last ones. Um, so no more questions for moving forward. And then I am going to just doodle as we lightning round these. Okay. Steven asks, you going to Lightbox? Yes, sir. Cool to meet you in person. Yes, sir. Uh, when Question is, is I don't know if I get a booth, but even if I don't, I'll still be there r- roughing around. When is Lightbox? September again. I think it's September 11th through 13th. Or is that like around those days? I don't is, that, is that when we did it last time? No. Because of the way that the weekend was. It was like the 6th mm. and 9th, I think it was, or 4th. Okay, well, but it's if like there's this... another one, I'll, I'll try to go to. Yeah, that'd I'll bring fun. you out. No, I'll bring you out. Even if I don't have a booth, still just oh, that'd nice be great. to have you out. Okay, um, Courtney says, uh, what concept do you think has been the most difficult to get across to your students? That's a good question. Oh, uh, the diff- the most difficult one is just making people sit and paint. It's like the only one I work on showing people how to paint, showing people how to draw, showing people how to do something is actually really easy and people can do it and they'll, they'll like, they'll feel really happy, but then they'll stop. And so it's really about like getting them not to stop. Uh, in fact, that's the whole inspiration for the sessions that I've decided to do. Um, probably starting in March, I'm going to do that, you know? where I meet up like at least once or twice a week and maybe potentially every day for a little bit, a little bit of time. But like, especially I have like long hauls at least once or twice a week where I will say, this is what we're working on for the week. And let's talk about it and hang out and then get people to work on it. And then maybe meet the second time at the end of the week and ask people how they did and what they done and shared on the discord or something, you know, but like, that's like, like, okay. Like it's like watching a bunch of, videos on how to, you know, juggle. It doesn't mean you know now how to juggle. You have to practice it, right? Like you have to practice every day until you understand how to juggle, you know? Learning a language, you can't just read one book. You have to practice it. Yeah. So like I'm really good at showing you all these cool ways of thinking about art and how to do it. Um, But what I can't do other than just reiterating the same point over and over uh, is get people to draw like I I always tell people like I have like a hundred maybe thousands of different ways now not thousands like hundreds of different ways to explain to you you should just draw a lot (laughs) you know what I mean hundreds of ways from using sports metaphors physical metaphors to talk about subconscious talk about intuition talk about patience inspiration motivation you know talk about discipline resilience all of these come to the root point of saying dog just keep on drawing and uh that's the hardest one because uh, I've had students who would just completely stop drawing for months. And then they're like, hey, man, I'm having a hard time drawing. And then I like, slap them with all the the points that I would make. And they're like, oh, I, I don't know why I forgot all about that, you know? And that's kind of my point. I've gone through that. Yeah. yeah. And then once they hit that epiphany and once they start to realize this, that's when it, the ball starts to snowball. You know what I mean? That's when you start to see some momentum. And um, like I understand is what I'm getting at that I'm not the common, uh, the lowest common denominator. So anyway, lightning. Okay. (laughs) It was a good Um, question. No, it was a good answer too. Uh, So Kitsune, Kitsune Fox says, what is the difference between graphic read and shapes? well uh shapes is just like more general graphic reads within that that's why i reverted you know what i mean it's like uh when i say anatomy but you can think about like gesture the anatomy of individual body parts you know 
there's a lot of that goes within anatomy you know what i mean so it's just like if i just generalize it then you'll just know to kind of hit anatomy hopefully on every front just like shapes it's the same idea because you can even tackle forms and light shapes and shadow shapes and stuff like this so it's just a really good generalization Matt Brennan asks, hey, from Alaska. Hey. Do you have any tips or methods for channeling physical slash emotional problems through your art? Or do you prefer squaring yourself away before picking up the brush? No, I, uh, I, I handle all my physical problems by nutrition and fitness. And I handle all my mental uh, problems by hanging out with friends. If you don't have... A tight knit group of friends. I would suggest using websites like Meetup and stuff and start acquiring some. Make a real effort of having yourself surrounded by people that are helping you out, not making you worse. Okay. Uh, my um, art doesn't. My art doesn't make me feel better. Um, because it's just second nature to me. It's like walking. Like walking around doesn't necessarily make me feel better, you know. But hanging out my buds talking that does streaming okay does. like streaming makes me feel better because it's kind of like doing that the talking part hanging out with my friends i feel good okay <laughs> uh mike leon donated another five dollars <laughs> you Thanks didn't have me. to he could have just said <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah just we explained. weren't we weren't asking you for more money yeah but that's cool thank you man um he says, do you usually draw an anthropomorphized character when you start a piece? Yeah, if I'm not really, like, have any focus, I'll just draw, like, a monster or a robot. It's like your comfort food. Yeah, definitely. I feel real yeah. comfortable. And I can talk really effectively if I'm just drawing something like this. It's not a challenge. But like I mentioned earlier, it's, be it's not a challenge because I've – this is like all I draw a lot, you know. I'm really, really used to this type of stuff. Would you would you say it's like you're like in a flow state? Yeah, it's yeah. like more of like rearranging the same same kind of shapes in an anime that I've drawn min millions of times before. I only get better at it, and it, what it does is that it makes me come up with even more unique looking characters because I try a little bit something different every time, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit different, and it just looks all of a sudden new. You know what I mean? It's like a, yeah. a, a pro athlete. Like, you think of, like, uh, Jordan, you know, he's at such a high level that he would come up with different ways to, like, dunk on you, you know? Just like a plain old dunk would be hard enough for me to try to just do and learn, you know? But for, for him, he's like, it's like a whole different level. I love, I love this analogy because it's like, <laughs> you're, like, saying, yeah, man, I just... Every time I'm just, I come up to the plate a little yeah. different, you know what I'm saying? Like, bring exactly. a little bit of different flavor, a little bit of different fire. And I dunk on these, these, <laughs> dunk on these paintings, dude. With all these paintings, bro. Dunk on these paintings. On Dunking these paintings, bro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so I missed the, uh, who wrote this question, but they asked, uh, uh, yeah, thanks what do you for think the donation, by the way. I really, I really appreciate it. I mean, people could ask questions with no, uh, uh, no um, inclination to donate. So I really do appreciate it, man. I appreciate your brother. Message me on uh, Instagram. I'll put you into the primary. We'll chat. Yeah, Michael. Michael Ian. Yeah. I don't know what your Instagram is, but it might help if you tell us that. Oh, yeah. Roll um, up pencil, bro. Oh, his. Sorry. His. So that you know what to look for. <laughs> I mean, mine's like on the back. I mean, well, what, what is yours like? <laughs> Mine's like literally right. on the banner. Yeah. Um, okay, so next question says, uh, oh, and by the way, there's four. Uh, we're not taking any more questions, guys. These are the last four. Let's do it. Um, thanks for participating. Uh, so this question says, what do you think of Steven Zapata? I just recently discovered him and really Love was him. missing out. Love him. We're friends. We're good buds. Yeah. Love him. Love his art. There's, that's it. There's nothing else to say. He's a good guy. All right, uh, Dama's draw, Dama's draws says, "How much sleep do you get these days? Um, do you have any tips to balance having enough sleep while 
you do a lot of studies on per, or personal work? Yeah, I think sleeping is more important than spending a lot of time working. You need time to rest. So the more the more you rest, the better you'll retain information. It's actually counterproductive to not rest, if you know what I mean. And so for me, it's been a real problem just because I have a lot of stuff. Uh, but in the past, I, I usually sleep like eight or nine hours. And then now I'm trying to get to eight or nine hours again. I'm trying to get to even 10 hours because I just have a lot on my mind. And so I just need to like muscle the sleep in, if that makes sense. Like just if I'm just laying down for 10 hours of the time, I've done it before uh, in the last week or two, just kind of see. And I use a sleep tracker to see how much sleep I'm getting. And you need like a lot of like REM and deep sleep. And in the past when I only get like six or seven hours of sleep, I'm getting barely any of that type of sleep. Wasn't so that clearly like it's just a baby baby. Yeah. Well, just in general, like I just have a hard time because I just think about a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. And I so usually attribute that with like all the, the babies. Yeah. That's definitely does not help. But, but what, what I'm trying to get at is you do need to sleep. Sleep is very important. And however you can get get it, you should get it. Uh, I recommend usually four to five hours of study is more than enough time to really kind of get, as long as it's focused, right? You don't have any distractions and you're just really in it. You could do two hours in the morning, two hours at night type of thing. And then maybe just painting and drawing the kind of stuff you like to draw, you know, things that, you know, bring you joy. But those two to th- two to f- four hours of study sessions, those are things that are really hard to draw, things that really do not make you happy, but you know you should be doing kind of stuff, right? Um, yeah, only like four to five hours, really. That's all you need. Anything more than that, I don't think is excessive. Okay. Um, also, Michael donated another $5. Yeah, man. Thanks. Said, uh, it's all good, brother. And then said just uh, some other comments said, just think Michael Lyon. So uh, I assume it's probably Michael Lyon on the. On Michael Instagram. Lyon. All right. Keep, if he messages you. Keep okay. On. So we got two more. John John V says, hey, sir. What's up, sir? Um, I enjoy the world of fine art, traditional painting, galleries, etc., as well as commercial art, such as concept art. Oh, cool. Uh, is there a way to bridge both worlds creatively slash uh, financially? Uh, I think concept art, not too many i don't know too many concept artists who do traditional stuff other than like uh line drawings you know um but not like paintings because it just takes too much time but <clears throat> and not that it takes too I'm much time yeah right. not yeah not too much time in terms of um um not too much time in terms of like actual time too much time in terms of like if there's iterations to be had that takes time and when you're dealing with like a you know photoshop or something you can do it so much faster you can iterate so much faster with photoshop you know what i mean and so when i say too much time that's kind of what i mean by that um but illustration there's definitely a gate there okay Last question from Hype Cinema it says, how does one know if they are studying fundamentals properly? Is there a proper way or a constant drawing or is constant drawing good enough? Constant drawing is good enough because um, this idea of I'm making my guy talk. This idea of like doing it right there is better ways to do things, absolutely. Um, and if you're just like mindlessly drawing the same old things, then you're, you're only really going to refine those types of things. You're never going to learn anything new if you don't draw anything new. But outside of that, anything you do that's new is going to teach you something. If you want to learn fundamentals, you should learn how to do the fundamentals. Like if you need to learn forms, then you should be practicing forms. Uh, I had a student, let me flip this. I had a student ask me, hey, you know, uh, 
should I study this? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? And he went through like a laundry list of really good ways to get better, right? He's like, when I'm practicing forum, should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? Like, which one's better? And I basically said, they're all good. Do them all. It's like if you go to the gym, I like using the gym because I've been going to the gym a lot. It's like if you only did bench press, you're just going to get really good at bench press. But if you want to get good overall chest and shoulder strength, you're going to have to do bench press, incline press, dips, uh, overhead press, all sorts of stuff. Oops, let me turn that off. So you you got to do dumbbell presses. You got to do flies. This is all, this is going to help shape your chest to be healthy and strong along with your shoulders. But if you only do one exercise that attacks one group of chest muscles, you're only going to get really, really good at that. But if you want to be really good at drawing characters, oops, <laughs> keep on clicking too much. If you want to draw characters that have a good sense of like depth, then you're going to have to like practice all the stuff. And that's my advice in a general sense. But usually if you do something a lot and you have the thirst to get better at it, the act of just getting started will encourage you to go in the right directions eventually. You will learn not only what to do, you will learn what not to do. Do you understand me? Do you? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Or if you don't listen to me, <laughs> that music's perfect. If you don't listen, I'll come and eat you. Because I'm the render monster. And the render monster eats those who don't draw or render often. <laughs> All right, <that's> it. <laughs> oh man okay yeah anyways guys good night thanks for hanging out for with us these late hours getting goofy <laughs> and uh, i really appreciate you guys' support i appreciate you guys asking great questions these questions lead to great answers that you know some people might not have been brave enough to ask or people aren't here to ask so thank you for that uh, if you guys want to keep chilling and hanging out, uh, I have a Patreon. If you guys like tutorials and stuff, you can visit my website. If you want to learn from me directly, you can go to my website and find my mentorship. I think I have a couple more seats left in April before we sell out. I think only a few more. And um, yeah, I'm sold out all the way to April. And so with that being said, good night, everybody. And thanks, Mike, for moderating. Appreciate yep, you. Peace out, guys.